Good night. Angie Mahari here. I have a comment here. It's really interesting. So, I'll uh, do another comment response. On the video I did borderline ghosting in the core BPD cycle to relationship rupture, commenter leaves this comment. Please do talk about the reality of the idealization phase, how we can reframe it and see it for what it really is, or for a lot of people, what it really, what they thought it was. It's not as great as it feels. It's not even remotely anywhere near as great as it feels, as many people find out later, unfortunately, right? Very painfully so. It's got signs of pain and fakery and desperation, the uh, idealization phase, the honeymoon phase, when you first meet the borderline. Commenter says it's got signs of pain and fakery and desperation and a dark, uncanny plastic cheapness, interesting way to put it, uh, to it. If it was real, it would have lasted or had the power of attachment. It's real to us, people with codependency, because we believe it. That's an interesting comment. The borderline idealization phase, you when you met them, or if somebody's new to this, well, but still I would be using, sorry, the language of when you met them, and everything was happening so quickly, and they were so intensely focused on you, and everything was intense. And then, what happens? Because this is people, men or women with BPD, who are with their own codependency, right? They are trying to people please you. They are mirroring you. And yes, they're idealizing you. And what does that really mean when they're idealizing you when they first meet you? Because right in the middle of that idealization, it feels great phase, people with BPD are seeing you still in the beginning as object of their parent representation or experiencing you as that is a better way to put that. So what does that really mean? It means that in a childlike way, they are putting you up on a pedestal that isn't really about you from the get-go. It's about their re-experiencing or, or re-experiencing unconsciously the good parent never had, seeking to please you and to do everything possible and, and, and to, you know, to, to make sure that you like them, that you want to be with them. And they're seeking to, this isn't all conscious. It's not like they're doing it on purpose, but it's out of the rep, unconscious repetition compulsion cycle of that lost self in the borderline, the borderline who doesn't have a stable sense of identity or really a sense of identity. And they'll be seeking that through you kind of from the get-go, but it feels really good in the beginning because they seem so focused on you. It seems like it's all about you. And they seem like they're just wonderful. So people with codependency are more susceptible to this idealization phase, this intense, fast-moving, getting-to-know-each-other reality. And But it's not really what's really happening. And, and you know, nobody can know that when it's first happened to you. And you've never had this happen to you before. And the other thing about it is that you really believe this person is who you're getting to know. But it happens so fast. So th this is what people often refer to, and I've talked about on this channel, as the borderline seducer, seducing type phase. But the thing is, are they really seducing you? Because if you think about it, they put you on a pedestal, they're idealizing you, they're trying to people please you, they're mirroring you, because it's all about you. You're experiencing somebody else showing you an idealized version of yourself. And then the reality of that is that they're seeing you as object of their parent representation. So they're not really seeing you. Even though it feels like they're entirely focused on you. And people often don't recognize this. So is this the seduction of borderlines, whether male or female? 
Or is this what they're really more or less doing unconsciously and why? And then the codependent, as I've said before, voracious hunger, but more to the point to feel, to really be seen and heard like many people haven't been in childhood or at times in childhood. That is one of the reasons and the hurtful ways that people develop their response to adverse childhood experience known as codependency. People, this is the hard part, people now, where you're at now, whether you BPD relationship breakup or the on off cycles, the limbo, etc. But now you know, or to some degree or other, you're thinking, you still believe in that you want to get back to that person who they were and what that felt like, for sure. But then you're also kind of knowing in your mind, likely, that that person that you fell in love with isn't who they are. And more to the point, what you experienced in the beginning wasn't really seduction, not on a conscious sort of level of intent to seduce you into the relationship. And so retrospectively, what people need to look at, and I help clients to do this, I'm not here to work with you if you resonate with me, is there is an element of responsibility taking there for people with codependency who got into these relationships because you didn't have the defenses, you didn't have more to the point the boundaries to recognize is this was way too good to be true. Then when something feels that intensely good, unfortunately, it it's too intense, it happens too quickly, and the next thing you know, it it wasn't really real at all. Is that really all about borderline seduction? N well, not consciously, but, but kind of, about what they're doing and why. But it's also about where you're coming from and why. And so people with codependency that feel like, well, the borderline did it to me, it's not really true. They did some things, yes, and they're responsible for that, and they're not even consciously aware of it usually. But then there's what you chose. But, you know, when I'm working with clients on this point, a lot of people at first are like, what do you mean I chose it? Well, you did, but you don't really remember that part, or you don't really think that you did. It was just like, this is great, who wouldn't choose this? Or who wouldn't want this? So there's an element of that in there too. So just to uh, get back to the commenter here, or to the comment, when they said, please do talk about the reality of idealization, the idealization phase, that's kind of the reality of it. The borderline is already experiencing you as object other parent representation of likely not only quote, good parent, but parent never had, parents still are searching for parent that they still need because they have all these unmet needs and a lost self to boot from their own childhoods. And so with that, then what's really real about the idealization phase? What do you think about that now? Please leave a comment below. If you like to share your experience, your thoughts, what do you think about that now? Because a lot of people have said to me that they just feel like they fell in love with a ghost. Because who you're falling in love with and who you're maintaining that love for and who many people are wanting to recycle back, the revolving door relationship, the on and off, the limbo place, is somebody that doesn't exist as you framed from your brief, you know, the honey idealization honeymoon phase. You frame that person as they were trying to represent themselves but not misrepresent themselves and just putting their best foot forward which isn't really their best foot forward, right? It's more about the unconscious repetition compulsion cycles, again, of the very young, arrested, uh, the emotionally arrested person with BPD, very young, looking for good mom or good dad. And so you get idealized primarily as that. And, and so this person that you're still trying to love, if you think of it this way, do you feel like you fell in love with a ghost? You feel like this person is basically a ghost, not only do they, that they do ghost and or discard, come and go ghost Hoover, ghost Hoover, maybe not getting anywhere near a discard or a final discard. So what are you really supposed to do with that now? How do you heal from this when it was so intense, when you believed it was something that it wasn't? How do you heal that? That's what I'm out here to help people to work on. So the commenter also said, how can we reframe it, the idealization phase and the honeymoon phase, 
and see it for what it really was. Well, I think that's when people start to work with someone. And, you know, I'm out here if you resonate with me, like I said, but whoever you choose to work with, be discerning, be careful. I think that the only way to reframe it is it's through that recovery process of realizing what part of that was was seemingly meeting what needs of yours, besides the obvious in the adult coming together. But what was happening for you emotionally? Why were you lacking in the boundaries? Why are you lacking in those boundaries? Why did you feel like something that many people will say, it did feel kind of too good to be true in the beginning, but it was great. So they went with it. And that's a choice made, but I'm not trying to say anybody's like with codependency is really 100% responsible for that because you can't really know what's happening. So the reframe really comes about the honeymoon phase and the idealization and what happened in the beginning and maybe for a while, various periods of time with various people at BPD. That reframe really comes in a healing recovery process because it's a very painful thing for people to do. And again, when you get to know that person with BPD in the beginning, and, and you might not know they have BPD, and you might never have heard of that, then you are falling in love with essentially a ghost, a person who isn't really real, who isn't who you think you're falling in love with. And this persists on when people are at the other end of the relationship or the relationship breakup or somewhere in the middle of that. It persists on for people. How can you see the honeymoon phase, the idealization phase, and getting to know the borderline and, and believing that you fell in love with them and to some degree or other? Many people have a lot of love. Not every situation is the same. People with codependency. But codependent love, I need to remind you, is not the healthiest of love. It is not independent love. It is not interdependent. You aren't an individuated individual if you have codependency. And all this matters, but you might not know any of that at the time. And so um, it's not so great as it feels. It's got signs of pain and fakery and desperation and a dark, uncanny plastic cheapness to it. That's interesting because it sounds like this person is either knowing that now in retrospect or like I've had many clients describe to me and maybe this commenter kind of have the same sense that even while you're falling in love with them, in this idealization beginning, it feels so great, it's happening so fast beginning and then to the honeymoon phase, whether there's whether you're just boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, and it's a honeymoon phase doesn't mean you have to be married. But the point is, it's like this person, it's got signs of pain and fakery and desperation and a dark uncanny plastic cheapness to it. Do you think that you saw through that at all? Do you think that you might have experienced any of those descriptors from the commenter? But like you quickly dismissed it? Do you think that maybe there was some piece of thinking or logic that you asked yourself, wow, this seems a little bit too good to be true or something? But then your feelings might have taken over and led you to go, but hey, it's great. So, and then people don't really, uh, people go with their feelings at that point. And then as to this commenter says, if the honeymoon, if the idealization of the borderline and then the honeymoon phase was real, it would have lasted. Yeah, but, well, yeah, one could say that, but obviously it's not real, right? And that's, so maybe that's one thing we need to look back at from the beginning and say, as I've said before, these relationships, as they start between a borderline and a codependent, are an unconscious setup to where you're starting the relationship, where you're starting to date, you're getting to know them, you're gonna move in there quickly, it's all gonna happen so fast, but it's really an unconscious setup because as soon as the relationship starts between the borderline and the codependent, it's also beginning to end. Because all these relationships, especially from the borderline side, are going to come to rupture, to devaluation, and whether ghosting or discarding, they just don't work they don't last so it really does say a lot about the honeymoon phase and the idealization doesn't it because it wasn't really real it's not what the borderline was hoping it would be and it's not what and they may never realize that and it's not what you thought it was it wasn't real and then the commenter said or, or this idealization honeymoon phase would have had power the power of attachment 
Well, I'm not sure how, how this commenter means the power of attachment because what is the power of attachment, right? I mean, attachment is crucial for building a healthy relationship and people with codependency don't have secure attachment and people with borderline personality have disorganized attachment. That doesn't mean they're just fearful or avoidant or have a fearful avoidant attachment style. It means essentially they really don't have an attachment style. Because they don't really have a self from which to attach to self or to other. It's real to us because we believe it. It's very true. Who you thought the borderline was as you were falling in love essentially with a ghost of a person. Who you thought they were and how great you thought that was. And, and hey, it can feel really wonderful in a lot of ways in the beginning, right? But all of that is predicated on what you believed. So then the next question of responsibility pops up. The borderline is doing what the borderline is doing in the idealization, mirroring, their codependent people pleasing of that getting to know you phase, only you're not getting to know them. And they're not really getting to know you either. In large part, more people BP than not, be they male or female, because they're already experiencing you as object other parent representation. They don't have a self from which to attach to you or a self from which they don't even have a reference inside to know the difference between them, the lost self, because they don't know who they are, and you. So it really is an unfortunate, unconscious setup between two people, not saying it's equal there, that isn't going to work and doesn't work, but then captures the emotional landscape, the need, the desire that many people from codependency have had to meet that one person. This is the person for a long time in your life. And that's a little bit overboard in terms of its intensity that you're going to meet this person all of a sudden quickly know they're the one. That that speaks to the the way that people with codependency don't really have a functional relationship, functional healthy relationship to self. That you can think that you can attach so amazingly so completely to somebody that essentially you don't really find out much about but it feels great right feels great so people with codependency are really taken away by their the feelings and by that voracious hunger to be seen and heard which that feels like it's happening when really it isn't i think that the commenter really hits on something when they say that this borderline idealization and the whole honeymoon phase wherein there's something in there that is equivalent or seemingly it's a little bit like the borderline idealization only it's not the same but the codependent kind of like yeah this is the one this is the person i want to be with my life this is who i've been looking for all my life or dreaming of all my life well there's going to be an element of something that you didn't get from a parent in that as well in your unconscious and not in the same way as what the borderline is unconsciously doing and why so do you feel like in the honeymoon ideal idealization honeymoon phase that you fell in love with a ghost were you i know if i ask the question most people will say yes but can you think about the reasons why you really weren't seduced into this and the reality that in, in healing recovery journeys, people with codependency have to realize they too made a choice. Not the most informed choice, right? Understandably, because you might never have heard of BPD and you didn't know what was happening. So does it feel to you now like the borderline that you initially met and you believe you fell in love with or you fell in love with to some degree or other, which might not be the healthiest of love or attachment from the codependent side, and people with BPD don't love, don't know how to take in your love and they don't attach to you. Do you feel now like you really fell in love with a ghost? And if you do, or if that makes sense to think about, then how can you still be wanting to get back with that ghost? Wanting to get back with that sort of non-person? Wanting to get back with the person that they really aren't? What drives that in codependence? What do you think? I'll have much more to say on it, but I really like to get some more feedback leave a comment i promise it won't hurt uh leave a comment and let me know what you think about that 
So anyway, the borderline idealization in the beginning isn't what people feel and believe it is. And people with BPD are not in some seduction phase consciously and you fall prey to that. No, you're making your own choices, but you don't know. You don't have all the information. And they're seeing you right from the get-go as object of their parent representation. And in the case of the idealization and in a honeymoon phase, it's object of their parent representation of a fantastic parent never had, but still really longed for. So where do you think you are as a person with codependency? What elements of your family of origin, your wounded inner child, your past, do you think got you so connected in that idealization and or honeymoon phase that wasn't really about who you really are or what you really need versus when things happen really intensely and quickly and it feels great? Yeah, a lot of people are going to tend to go with that. But people that don't have codependency and people that are, you know, m averagely more mentally healthy than that, they have more boundaries. And I'm not saying there's a million of them out there. I don't know. But there are some people like that. They will back away from this intensity. They will back away from the very experience that the person with BPD is giving in, in however you want to look at it and frame it, is giving to codependent. Somebody who's not codependent will back away from that and be like, what's up with this person? So, so, and that's not to say there's something really wrong about you if you have codependency. No, it's just about what you need to learn more about because it is the woundedness of childhood with people with codependency that is the single most predicting factor or in retrospect factor how you ended up with the person with BPD when somebody who wasn't codependent wouldn't have. And what does that really mean? So what do you really make out of this idealization phase, the beginning, from what you know now, and how great it felt? And what do you think it means for you as a codependent if that's what you're still trying to recapture? What might you need to know more about in a healing recovery process so that you won't still be trying to get back something that wasn't real? And do you feel like you fell in love with a ghost.